King of the Hill is a weird series to make merchandise of. It does have it though. King of the Hill had a lot of licensed stuff during its run. The King of the Hill official CD, the King of the Hill official book, written by Hank Hill, the Will Rogers theatrical PSA, though that doesn't really count as merchandise, and the King of the Hill RC Cola ad. Yes, it was real. King of the Hill American Dream Sweepstakes. See specially marked packages of RC products for details. You could win a gas barbecue, John Deere lawn tractor, or $100,000 cash. I better be eligible. That's all I have to say. There are more out there things from the King of the Hill franchise. How about the King of the Hill video game? Yes, that was also real. It was never actually lost, too. Published in 2000 by Fox Interactive for the PC and Macintosh, it was a legitimate, playable, back in the day, game based on King of the Hill. It is, unfortunately, nothing like propane. More point-and-click adventure rather than action adventure. It is actually two games. Hootenanny and Texas Hunting. I mean, Texas Hunting. Though for a show as favorably remembered as King of the Hill, nobody remembers this video game adaptation. Most will think it's a joke. Why is that? Well, it's not particularly good, or even easy to run. I don't mean play, but run. So, it fell into a memory hole. Thankfully, some heroes out there have done their best to preserve the game, to prove it does exist in some form. Give a thanks to Noiseland Co., Lux's Bookworm Adventures, and HPAD who have uploaded content from the game. Surprisingly, it is not some cash grab licensed game Fox ordered to make a buck off the show. The game is so accurate to its source material, it created a pseudo controversy about King of the Hill which lasted for almost a decade. It was not solved until the very last episode of the show. So, since I talk about King of the Hill, let us talk about one of the strangest parts of it. You don't know me, but I know where you hunt. Don't mind Dale, he spends a lot of time breathing pesticides. The phrase, licensed King of the Hill game, does not inspire confidence. While released in 2000, the King of the Hill PC game, as it's known, has two parts, Hootenanny and Texas Huntin', both were likely under development between 1998 and 1999. Both largely only reference content from the show up to season 3, 1998 to 1999. Parts of Hootenanny were probably produced as Flash games for the show's official website first. The game's description reads, For those of us who have always wanted to visit Arlen, Texas, but have never been able to organize a trip, now all the thrills come to the home computer with King of the Hill. Inspired by the hit TV show, it features the Hills and their neighbors in 20 different 4th of July games and activities, such as barbecue, which Hank Hill says is the only cooking that should be done by a man. Mow Hank's lawn quickly and thoroughly to win the lawnmower race. Go on a scavenger hunt in the Hill House with Bobby. Peggy's tic-tac-toss game combines her favorite hobbies, word games and softball. Bill tries to recreate his first date with Lenore, his ex-wife, by building a miniature golf course. While Lenore will never more use it, that doesn't stop you. Meanwhile, Dale has turned his backyard into a paintball course, and you'll find old appliances and other objects to hide behind. Paintball, of course, is just practice for a trip with the Arlen Hunting Club. Who developed this? Flying Tiger Development. A company known for licensed games, also DVD menus. People are more likely to know Flying Tiger Development for the TurboGrafx-16 and Johnny Turbo, though. The King of the Hill PC game is still listed under Products on the Flying Tiger website. Unfortunately, there is little to no information on it there. Only a screenshot from Bill's mini-golf from the Hootenanny game. There is this, though. The King of the Hill game seems to have been written by the TV show's actual writers, too. Mike Judge and Greg Daniels' names appear on the cover. Mike Judge's name actually appears on the cover twice, interestingly enough. It is not stated on there, but the game includes some very exact King of the Hill knowledge and references to the established continuity only the real writers would be aware of. Bill's full name makes an appearance in-game, Joseph references the fact Dale gets an allowance. My dad says he'll raise my allowance if I do more chores. Of course if I do that, then I'll be making more than him. And Cotton refers to Hank as Bad Hank. Correct! 
I am already as nice as humanly possible to Hank. Or as I call him, Bad Hank. Yes, even if this game was produced before Season 4, it also seems to allude to a few things that had not yet been established in show as of the time of production. Why so obscure? It's so unknown a good amount of people think it is totally made up. One reason may be because the term King of the Hill is pretty ubiquitous in video game jargon, either in game titles or game modes. It's not easy to find or search then. There also does not appear to have been many ads for this game. Most of the reviews about it are recent and are usually jokes too. This 10 out of 10 review from King of the Hill fan 42069 on August 11th, 2020, proclaiming Hank Hill their waifu and saying this game is amazing is likely not legitimate. I highly doubt they even played it too. Mike's review on Amazon from December 30th, 2000, titled Arlen's Never Been So Bland, is probably the most legitimate and gets at the game's core issues. When I purchased King of the Hill, I had hopes that it would be as good as Virtual Springfield, the CD-ROM based on The Simpsons released several years ago. I couldn't be further from the truth. First, the game is monotonous. It's the same games, same remarks, same everything with each game. In addition, at least two of the games in the Hootenanny section are readily available on the internet in the form of free Shockwave games. The games are horribly boring and are over in a matter of a few minutes. There is very limited interactivity with the people in Ireland and with the places you can go while in Hank Hill's house. In short, save your money. The TV show is exponentially more entertaining than this piece of dreck. Today, the game is essentially abandonware. Or legal complications with Fox mean it basically is. Licensing complications and general uninterest mean it is unlikely to ever see an updated release. Not that an update would be easy with it. This game is incredibly outdated in both coding and content, and will not work on most modern computers. Or really any OS from the past decade. Systems beyond Windows 95, 98, and Windows XP are generally unable to even start it. It's legendarily difficult to get running. For being such a forgotten game, the King of the Hill game's compatibility issues are somewhat infamous. The comments, or more complaints, on my abandonware and Amazon are prolific about that. This game is so old it needs QuickTime Video and Shockwave Media Player to run, and that is if you are able to get the right VM settings to get it started. Of the few who have been able to get it working, everyone reports using a different process or virtual machine. On HPAD's original upload of the game, the earliest surviving footage on YouTube, there was an earlier video but it's been taken down, HPAD commented, I used VMware Player with Windows XP. You gotta keep opening it a billion times before it finally starts. It's annoying, but it indeed eventually will start. Noiseland Co. believes it needs the disc to start. But the key thing to remember is if you want it to work well and sound well, it has to be VirtualBox 4.3.40. So if you get that, the game should, uh, Windows 98 should install successfully, sound should work, and then the game should work. Uh, and then the final thing is you can't just uh, have a King of the Hill ISO like you would most any other game. You actually need the disc in a physical CD drive um, for it to pass the DRM check. The ISO will not work. Someone smar smarter than I can perhaps <laughs> figure out how to crack it, but I never have been able to figure it out. So the only way you're going to get in is everything I just talked about to set it up, buying the disc on eBay or Amazon, what have you, getting it into your CD drive so that the game, uh, when you run the game, it'll check against that. And if all that stuff's there, then you're good to go. So the, that whole preamble was just to say, uh, that's how it's poss possible to do this, to play this game. And now uh, I'm going to go ahead and play it. That may only apply to Texas hunting, though. Some people claim Hootenanny will work off ISO alone. Lex the Bookworm Games uploaded the entire game ISO to archive.org, so you can attempt to get it running if you want to. Either way, if you cannot get it started, there is a full game FAQs walkthrough of the game by Subsane from 2013. It goes into depth for both Hootenanny and Texas Huntin'. You will only miss some of the quips from the game. How is the game, or games, then? Well, as said, it is actually two games. Jeez, give me some space, Peggy. Hootenanny is the more King of the Hill game. You are a new neighbor who has been invited to a Hootenanny block party with your new Arlen neighbors. Make sure you impress all your neighbors. Yes, 
This game has a reputation system, like you have social links with the characters from King of the Hill. You never see it coming. It also has a schedule you have to adhere to if you want to play all the minigames. There is a time limit on and between activities. Between that, you interact with your favorite Arlen inhabitants from the show. The lines are randomized, so they have a habit to repeat, but they are very King of the Hill. They say you are what you sell, and I guess that makes me efficient, odorless, and loved by millions. <laughs> well, alright. At the end, one of the characters says how they like you, so make sure they like you. During the Hootenanny, you will participate in such stimulating activities as scavenger hunt with Bobby, paintball with Dale, which is usually glitched and doesn't work, beanbag toss with Peggy, lawnmower race with Hank, and mini golf with Bill. Mini golf with Bill also features Bill's lizard Lenore and is based on the third season episode Pretty Pretty Dresses. The game also boasts about over 20 activities, but activities is subjective. These include throw cotton a beer. You there! Make yourself useful and throw me a beer! You're a pathetic loser! But at least you're a pathetic loser who fetched a beer for a war hero! Swat mosquitoes on Bill and flip a burger. Is this some weird meta commentary on video games? A lot of the activities are randomized and will not occur every playthrough. Once you beat the game though, you can do the cheat code to directly access each minigame. Though, according to some Reddit posts, some of the minigames, like mini golf and paintball, were freely available online as flash games. Not anymore though. Texas Hunt then, it's exactly what it says. The opening is this, frankly, very bizarre scene where Hank introduces himself to the player. Hello there, I'm Hank Hill. My friends and I have just started up a local hunting club and I couldn't help but notice from your cart there that you're a fellow enthusiast. That's quite a doe decoy you've got there. Now, normally I wouldn't be this forward, but how'd you like to join us on our first outing? Our hunting group could sure use a pro like you around. Uh, you'll know what I mean when you see these guys. Tell you what, why don't you come by my house tomorrow? Not too early, let's say, Don. I'll see you then. After that, you join the Arlen Hunting Club to go hunting. Once you choose your equipment, you head out to hunt in parts of Texas or Oklahoma. Just Oklahoma in general. Don't shoot humans, not that it'll do anything, because your license will be revoked and your hunting partner will yell at you. You almost killed a person! You are in violation of rule number 57-A, subsection D, paragraph 2. Plus you shot at something that wasn't on your license. It is really a pseudo-realistic hunting game, for 2000 that is, with a King of the Hill skin. The idea is mostly based on season 1's The Order of the Straight Arrow, season 3, Good Hill Hunting, and some of the ideas will later show up again in season 8, years later, during Fish and Wildlife. What can be said about it? It's not as bad as one would think, but also not remarkable in any way. This is not really a review though. The King of the Hill charm really only shines in the dialogue in Hootenanny, mostly isolated to the quips and one-liners in the interactions. Some of them are pretty vicious too. You want to keep talking to me? You must be a real loser. 90% of Cotton's lines are dedicated to ragging on Hank. Name's Cotton Hill. Hank Hill's dad. There. I admitted it. Really, the most interesting part of the game, this is strange to say, is exploring the hill house? You can also see a bit of the neighborhood, but not much. Hootenanny is a good idea, but not much of a game. At the end, your reward is talking to John Redcorn. I'm a spiritual faith healer. I converse with my gods, and then I take their ancient wisdom and bestow it upon my patients and it's covered by most insurance plans. Texas Hunting is a game, but not much interesting. It is not impressive and rather bland, but you would get your money's worth for a PC game in 2000. These negatives outweigh those few positives. There are also game-breaking bugs, but that might be due to emulation. The paintball minigame seems to be broken on most installs and will automatically disqualify the player upon start. 
The other games are crushingly generic, and you can, or could, play on Flash slash Shockwave sites for free online back in the day. The art, while largely on point, can also be a little janky sometimes. Khan is the worst example of this. It looks like he was stung by a bunch of bees. Beyond that, the animation is not that bad, but there is not a lot of it. The most interesting part of the King of the Hill video game is barely even related to the game. A single line of dialogue in this game created a controversy, or more mystery, that would last a decade after its release. What is Boomhauer's first name? Well, it is Jeff. It was not fully revealed until the series finale in 2010, though. But that was not technically the first time. For a decade, rumors circulated online that Boomhauer's first name was Jeff. It turned out to be correct, but impossible to prove until the final episode. So where did this rumor come from? It may have first shown up in a King of the Hill Emmy ad in 2002, but no archive remains of that image. So that is not for certain. Boomhauer does say this in-game, though. Hey man, my name's Jeff Don, that's Boomhauer III. You can just call me Boomhauer, don't you? Yes. He drops it right there. Nobody ever knew the source of it because nobody remembered or cared about this game. There's even an argument on Wikipedia about this. Due to the game's obscurity, the rumor circulated without a source for a decade. But if you played it, you would have known Boomhauer's first name ten years early, the game's only lasting legacy, and nobody really knew it or appreciated it. Only the writers, I guess. Is the King of the Hill video game rightfully forgotten? Eh, probably not. The more surprising thing is that, for a show like King of the Hill, it exists at all. Not that the writers slash producers do not have other odd ideas. Do not forget the attempt at a live-action Monsignor Martinez pilot. The impressive thing about the game is it seems some of the writers worked on it, but that is unclear. It's rather true to the show in humor and theme. The credits do not provide much detail on that, but for whatever a King of the Hill video game can be, it is a faithful attempt at one. The issue is that King of the Hill video game did not need to exist. Well, this one at least. It is really more a King of the Hill episode in the form of a video game. A very weird one with a self-insert player character. But, as Bobby says... Do you know some people don't consider video games to be a sport? Just because you play them sitting down doesn't make them not. Hey, I got blisters. My grandpa says when he was young, they didn't have video games. And that's why they call it the Great Depression. Computers don't make errors. What they do, they do on purpose. Gotta give a damn old thank you, man. Patreon supporter, Jail Samiti family, man. Bye bye.